everyone, Sean Clement here, Golf WRX in our, uh, our little facility, Golf 18. Uh, while we're waiting for our facility to be built, uh, things are advancing wonderfully. We should be in there in about four weeks. So um, today we're talking about Cameron Champ's arm motion. And it's an arm motion that I particularly like. Um, that's, uh, to me, it's the model arm motion that you should have. And the reason being is that if you compare it to the arm motion of so many other disciplines, it very much coincides and, and, and uh, works beautifully with it. So do you remember one of our drills we talked about if you had a, a sword in your hands, a machete, and you wanted to slash through a bamboo shoot? Well, let's say you know your bamboo shoot is running horizontally above your head. That would be just like a tennis serve. So if I'm going to slice through a bamboo shoot, let's say right here, that pipe, you see how I'm getting there? So it very much is like a tennis serve. The elbow leads the hand, the hand leads the beginning of the sword, and then the, then the tip of the sword follows suit. So it's very much like fishing. The elbow leads. So in, in baseball, same thing, the elbow is leading. And it's the same thing if you're hammering something into a door frame. So notice in, in golf, we're hammering this way. So the head position, and we'll talk about that in the next video, really helps match up what we're trying to do with the arm motion. We're trying to deliver this lure in that direction. That's where the fish is. That's where the money is on tour is over at the target. So in order for the anatomy to perform properly, you need to have the grip that we just talked about last week. So have a look at um, knife the grip, Sean Clement, an oldie but goodie. Grip and wrist hinge, that was my first video on grip. It's got like almost 700,000 hits. It is still the, the benchmark for how a grip should be in golf. And that's something that we take a lot of pride in, in how the hands are shaped around the club because it sets everything up. Now, yes, you've seen some incredibly good swings with some not so good grips. And yes, you can make a bad grip work, but if you wanna put all the chances on your side, and especially if you're not, you're not getting the performance that you, that you should have, one of the, f the first things you need to do is take a look at the grip. Now, once we have that proper grip, then it sets up the arm motion absolutely magically, okay? Because your arm has a very specific way of operating. So something you could try right now, make a fist palm up, right? Extend it palm up. You'll feel a lot of tension build up in that, in that bicep and forearm. And when you go palm down, you'll feel the tension dissipate. Same thing, if you bring it back palm down, you'll feel some tension in that forearm, the top of the forearm. You bring it palm up and you notice that tension dissipates. So there's a very specific way that the arm is built to move. So in boxing, you're, you're facing your opponent this way, not this way. And then as you snap the punch, you notice the palm tends to go down. You don't snap a punch in this manner, not a full extension anyways. Obviously, a, a, an uppercut's gonna be that way. So, as we take the club back, we take the club back, both arms are still in their full extension. As soon as right here, that you'll feel a point where you can't go any further without any strain in the body, and that's where that trail arm's gonna fold. So when that trail arm folds, it rotates the forearms and it allows your wrists to hinge nicely. Well, in that wrist hinge, you notice how that index finger in my grip is really supporting that and I'm getting a wonderful load in my forearm. So as I change directions at the top of the swing, nothing falls apart. I don't get floppiness in my grip. So everything is very secure on both snuff boxes now I can move in the direction of my target very authoritatively, okay? So backswing, fold hinge, we're moving toward the target, and then gravity unwinds and releases the club towards the, tar the, the target, 
and the weight of the club releases that right hand over the left hand and everything rehinges into the finish. So there's a nice fold and hinge. And then on the other side, there's a refold and rehinge from that lead arm. Of course, there's a time where both arms are nicely extended, but then at one point, the, you know, the arms need to fold. You can't continue on fully extended indefinitely. So, because it's not the way the anatomy is meant to work. So what we want is a nice load without the collapse. So many of you tend to get the, um, that trail elbow stuck behind you. One of the reasons why is that because you're not turning enough in the backswing. And the, the video we use to remedy that is, remember the, the sword analogy? So fencing for power, put the sword in the lead hand, gather the sword. Well, notice now if I put my right hand to it, I got a nice extension of that right arm. So if I don't turn, my left arm collapses into me. Well, if the left arm is collapsing this way, then the right arm is forced behind me. Left arm collapses, put the right arm on, <laughs> you're in, you know, everything's stuck behind you. Left arm extends fully, put the right arm on and look at that. Now I've got some, some really nice space for that elbow. Now, because the elbow is part of that kinetic chain, now that the elbow's in front of me, I can move into the target. Notice I got room for that elbow. If I'm moving in your direction, see where my elbow is. Now I can deliver deep into my target and that's, that's where I'm going to have the best shots. There's 15 to 30 yards difference in the irons, could be more with the woods, but there's 15 to 20 yards difference between at the ball and through the ball, okay? Extremely important. So, I got room for both elbows. Take it back. I'm already turning. The right arm folds the wrist hinge. Now I got room to move in the direction of my target, which is right edge of that, right into the center of that diamond there. So, got space, moving toward the target. So everything is exploding in that direction. And so if I get stuck behind me, don't turn on time. There we go. Now I'm stuck here. How in the world do I get back to the ball? I have to re-extend at one point, and that's where you'll tend to come over the top. And if you don't extend, you'll have to move out in front of the ball. See what happens? Everything's stuck behind me, and that's where the head has to come out in front. And I'm going to have to somehow, you know, find a way to unwind. Whereas everything's out in front, then the kinetic chain can engage, and I can get a nice slingshot in the direction of my target. And that's what Cameron Champ talks about in his, in his, his sensation. He says, I feel a slingshot towards my target. And that's exactly what you want to have. And that's when you know you're engaging that kinetic chain properly. So if everything is in place, you notice a good baseball player, if I'm throwing a ball, you'll see a nice width over here. And then when that kinetic chain engages, then you've got that wonderful slingshot effect toward the target. So, the things that you want to get out of this video is immediate turns so that the left arm doesn't collapse into your rib cage. Now the right arm folds and the wrist hinge. I got everything right here in front of me. Look where that right elbow is. Now I can go to the target. So notice the elbow can lead the hand. The hand leads the shaft. The shaft leads the heel. The heel leads the toe. And off we go out there in the direction that we want the ball to go. So if we look at, uh, you know, our favorite, where is that hammer? So I got my door frame, I got my hammer. If I'm hammering down, the elbow leads the hand. If I'm hammering through, elbow leads the hand. So elbow leads the hand, the hand leads the handle, and the handle leads the hammer. Now, after I've compress the nail through the door frame, something's got to happen over here. I can't hold on to the hammer all the way. And you'll notice that even Zach Johnson, 
with that very strong grip, he can hold on pretty much the, the whole time. At one point, it has to release. So I really enjoy allowing the hammer to release me in the direction I want that ball to go. So as the hammer releases me, then you got to have that yield on the other side. So grab your household hammer. You'll notice that when you get set up to hammer in that direction, can you see what happens to my vision? And we're going to see this next week. See where my eyes are? This will make it feel like you're going way out to the right. You're not. So I grab the hammer right here. It feels like I can deliver right through the nail. If I take it too far inside, it feels like I'm going to bend the nail. I won't even have access. Take it too outside, no good. Take it up, I'm going to bend the nail down. So naturally, you'll feel, wow, look at that. Look how wide that arm is. So if we keep that there, yes, I can hammer. Got it. Don't got it. It feels exactly the same. So this is something that you can easily do at home with a household hammer right up against the door frame. And this will give you a fantastic feel for how the arms need to work in your golf swing. So I hope you enjoyed that. Leave your comments below. And we got tons of videos. Look at the, the arm motion, loaded arms, Sean Clement. You look at uh, how arms and club release, Sean Clement. How to finish the backswing, Sean Clement. Have a look at those videos. And our premium channel is chock full of two angles. So you see front angle and back angle at the same time. So you get a much better view and, and, and a clearer view of what we're trying to do. So take a look at wisdomandgolfpremium.com. In the meantime, subscribe and give me a like, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>